Hi friends, welcome to Aerotech Solutions. So let's see the continuation with the previous session. Uh, I just explained the block diagram of microcontroller. So basically, the basic microcontroller have its own blocks. So clearly discussed about the individual blocks, what is CPU and what are memories and what is IO ports and what is the purpose of each and individual blocks. Okay, so this is very important to understand as a beginner so you need to focus on every individual microcontroller. So, but most of them thought that all 8051 microcontrollers have only the similar features. Okay, so but there are the manufacturers are showing some differences. So most of the cases, 8051 microcontroller, it's a common theory for everyone in our books, but Coming to applications, you need to understand what is 8051 microcontroller, suppose and you are hearing so many company names. So while doing programming, so I think uh, most of you are aware of Keel software and whenever you are trying to attempt a Keel IDE for program development, so you may find choose target. So every, every program will ask for target device. So what is your target device? So even though it is 8051, you need to choose one specific manufacturers from the list. Like, so whether it is a Atmel company or it is a Samsung company or it is a Motorola or it is a Philips. So you need to understand. So those concept like why you have so many company names while choosing target device. So because every individual 8051 has its own features like if you want to buy a TV like 32 inches TV from the market so you go to the shop you will find similar sizes see every TV has the same size which is 32 inches but you are trying to observe the internal features so what is the quality of audio what is the video resolution so what is your uh, capacity or uh, what is the size and what are the other features uh, which is better than your previous one? So, see, 8051 is common for all individual manufacturers, but internally they are providing some differences in the amount of memories, in the amount of IOs, in the amount of features. So that that is the main motto of this video. I want to explain. So these the six blocks you have the standard blocks from every 8051. Again, the standards is the important word in electronics. You need to understand you cannot design your own microcontroller. You need to follow some standards. So without standards, whatever the basic knowledge you are learning, you cannot apply for next things. Okay, even for languages, there are standards like the C language, which is which is developed by ANSI standards. Okay, so see in electronics, there is a there is the important rule or important thing you need to follow always standards even you, if you design a product you need to follow some standards you need to take some licenses from from the authorized organizations so you cannot design your own product and you cannot release into market so you need to you need to get the some trademark okay so even for microcontrollers there is a standard without involving the six standard features in a microcontroller you cannot proceed to design your own microcontroller. So there is the only reason. So all manufacturers are following the standards of these blocks. But again, they are showing some differences in the, in the quantity formation. Like Atmel is giving only 128 bytes of RAM. But if you go with Philips, so they are giving some 1024 bytes. So, so th this is the point you need to understand in the case of data memory. See. Every individual manufacturer have different sizes. If you are dealing with Atmel 8089S51, so the data memory is only 128 bytes. If you are proceeding with Motorola, again, which is 256 bytes. For Philips, which is 1024 bytes. See, this, this features differences between controller manufacturers. I want to clear you. So don't buy hard. Always 8051 have 128 bytes of RAM, 128 bytes of RAM. No. If you are changing your manufacturer, this quantity will change. Okay. So according to that, you need to work. 
okay even if 8051 used in industry products because of these differences maybe you, you you just written some lengthy program so which is which is not allowing to save within only 4 kilobytes so you may you may need to choose some some more amount of memory controller from other manufacturers that's it so if you are dealing with philips these are the blocks or these are the features they are giving in the form of in this with this much of amount of features so i'll tell one by one philips 889v51 rd2 this controller have 8 bit cpu again all are common with 8 bit capacity as a data memory they are giving 1024 bytes and as a program memory they are giving 64 kilobytes and io ports are 4 and 3 timers from philips not 2 whereas in atmel you may you may find only 2 2 timers but whereas 8 interrupts resources from philips family and serial ports are 2 not one protocol support so basically your atmel have only one protocol support which is uart as per your previous block diagram discussion but now philips from philips you may get spi also so this because of this spi you may have some good applications like sd card sd card based applications or eprom based operations or adcs these are very easy and simple to interface whenever you have this protocol on chip with a philips so this is atmel i think you may get this device features as per uh, in your academic so these are the simple features 8 bit data memory is 128 bytes and rom memory which is program memory is only 4 kilobytes and four time four io ports as usual here uh, you are finding only two timers from atmel and six interrupt resources with one uart protocol support so again i am giving one more manufacturer which is motorola and motorola which is dealing with 8 bit capacity and ram memory is 256 bytes and rom memory is 64 kilobytes and here you may find five io ports from this motorola series and three timers eight interrupts and multiple protocol support here you are i2c spi see there are there are many major benefits if device is supporting more protocols like UART, I2C, SPI and also the Motorola family is providing on-chip ADC also. So the ADC feature if you have on-chip no need to use external ADCs. So the main motto of microcontrollers is very clear whatever the general feature for applications you need to make it on-chip. So in all new generation controllers you are finding Wi-Fi on-chip, Bluetooth on-chip, so SPA on-chip i2c on chip usb on chip ethernet on chip so that your microcontrollers are becoming one chip solution for any kind of product so no need to ex extract or enlarge your hardware so just by keeping one microcontroller in motherboard you can solve any kind of problem see always for communication purpose i need more protocol more protocol support like i2c spa can ethernet wi-fi bluetooth so once you take it one advanced controller block diagram like raspberry pi or stm32 series controllers so most of the external requirements they are going to avoid and they are giving us on chip so the importance of knowing these features and blocks from the microcontroller so this is very important don't buy heart any microcontroller if you are changing the manufacturer the quantities are different okay remember so my sincere suggestion is every microcontroller has its own features and with different quantities okay and as application developer you need to start learning so uh, the importance of blocks purpose of blocks is very clear from your side and whenever you are knowing the quantities so if you have, if you have good amount of quantities from each block so it is easy to implement very good applications you can interface any module directly or you can deal with external uh, sensors or external kind of modules just with a simple way okay if there is no on chip anything which is not supporting like adc or pwm 
you need to use again one external IC for that specific purpose. Okay, so most of the application developers they will think on like what is the amount of these features. So that's also very important. So this this is the thing I need to clear on the block diagram. So we'll, in the next session we will move on to one microcontroller pin diagram. Thank you. Thanks for watching.